to me, some fun stuff. Uh, well, it's all pretty fun, but anyway, this is going to be the retract install in the wings. And as you can see here in these ribs, they already have the cutouts made for them where the air cylinder will rest and the retract will be mounted onto these ribs. And as you can see, these ribs have been doubled up so they are able to withstand and hold the retract and uh, absorb the energy from the landing. And that's going to be a major player in durability and strength of our mounting for the retract. Over here is the actual retract that we're going to be installing into this wing. And you can see I've already labeled it uh, right wing. And that's just for my own sake. Uh, you don't really have to do that, but for me it's just avoids that much more confusion in the future if you mount something incorrectly because you didn't uh, label it. And over here is the wheel we're going to be using to mount onto that. These are scale wheels with actual, if you look right, I can show a close up here. You can see that it actually says continental on it on one side and actually on the other side it says Goodyear. And that's just for some scale of realism and these have hubcaps that do go on here eventually. So this is the wheel that we'll be installing and here's the axle and that will of course go onto the strut here. We'll trim that off, cut that down to the proper size eventually. And moving on, here is the fittings and everything needed for the pneumatic system that will drive the retract up and down. And that's going to be the cylinder which holds the air reservoir. And that will drive this retract to open and close. Here are the air lines. And you might be wondering why this tape is attached here. So here I had this attached to the wall. And what that allowed is the air lines to stretch out. So that's the components for the retract install. But right now we need to focus on building the mounting section in the wing and that's going to be using a plywood uh, <coughs> brace, landing gear brace, and a basswood brace. Uh, this has a groove in it, uh, it doesn't really serve any purpose for the retract install but if you're doing a fixed gear install the holes for that are drilled in this groove and that's usually mounted in the wing right side up like this. But for this purpose we're going to be installing this brace uh, in a downward position because we're going to be placing the mounting plate for the retract on here like this and we're drilling holes into this and uh, we don't want that groove interfering with that. So to begin we're going to be doing like I said the landing gear brace in, uh, mounting. We're going to be epoxying this in here, trimming this off on these edges and then adding the other brace up top here which will, of course, be trimmed off on the edges as well and epoxied into place. And that will provide our uh, mounting surface for our retract. Just like this, the retract now has a nice solid surface to be mounted on with one, two, three points of solid contact through the ribs that have been doubled up with two sheets of plywood to increase the strength of this area which is definitely important. One of the th steps that I did previously was drilling these holes down here that you can see. These are for the airlines to get the clearance, I mean the uh, adequate room to run the airlines through and this is for the servo wires and their jacks to provide the uh, clearance to run those through the wing because we will be installing of course the flaps will be here and as you can see this has already been set up for the flap we'll be eventually cutting that off here and here to make our flap and then over here of course will be the aileron that runs along the whole length of the uh, <clears throat> wing from the flap to the wing tip I ran the air lines through the ribs through the holes I had pre-drilled. Now you could have drilled those afterwards, but it certainly saves time doing it before install of the ribs into the uh, 
making the wing. So here are the air lines as they will be run through the wing. That will of course go through the center section and that will then feed out into the fuselage eventually. Uh, I'm just going to go and hook this up to the retract just to see what that looks like full. And then as you can see I've put the retract back in and mounted the air lines to the fittings for the air cylinder which will actuate the uh, landing gear itself. Now as you can see uh, I might keep this or I might not but I just wanted to give you an idea of what everything looked like. As you can see here I ran the, the air line through one of these relief holes that was cut into the rib and that allowed me to provide a smoother transition from the fitting out through routing out through the wing itself. If I had ran the airline through this relief cut here, I probably would have had this airline be possibly kinked, which would have of course led to a failure of this uh, retract opening or closing properly. So it's just good to do a drier run with with uh, with your airlines to give yourself an idea what everything's going to look like uh, because when you're doing the mounting you might have to retrofit something or sand a little bit here or modify a hole here or whatever it needs to be to make everything run properly and when you're building a model from a kit they don't really tell you that that kind of stuff but um, I'm here to give you some pointers on that to avoid any headaches in the future that you may come up against when you're doing something like this. You'll notice that I have not put this airline very far on the fitting itself because those barbs that are on the fitting are, are very effective at holding the airline in place. So, so much so that if you try and pull off the airline it digs into the barb even more and really the only way you can get it off after you place it all the way on the fitting is to cut it off uh, from there and then remove it from there. So be aware that when you're just test fitting the airlines onto the fittings just put it on just enough so that it stays on but don't put it on all the way or you will have to cut it off. Uh, you can remove it uh, but you might end up damaging the the fittings or the air cylinder uh, where it's uh, threaded into it. We're ready to install the uh, landing gear rails now. <clears throat> As you can see, the spaces are all ready. I've created a, an extra long sanding bar out of a piece of MDF and I've used that to sand across all three of these ribs so I have a nice even surface to lay the uh, landing gear rail across. So I've finished up with the sanding and I've gone ahead and already marked and cut this landing gear rail uh, made out of basswood to the appropriate length. Left a little on the edges so I can sand that smooth flush with the uh, ribs on each end. I'm going to go ahead and uh, epoxy that in place now and then when that's secure I'm going to go ahead and glue in the other landing gear, landing gear rail brace up top here and that will be glued in with 30 minute epoxy to uh, give me plenty of time to set everything and add any more braces that I need to which there will be a brace under here <clears throat> Plans don't call for it, but I believe that where the bulk of the uh, mounting braces, uh, mounting plate is going to be for the landing gear uh, <coughs> retract, I believe that there needs to be some kind of reinforcement. So I'm going to put a, a block here that's glued to the side of this rib and to this uh, rail to add uh, extra strength and rigidity to this whole surface. Uh, we've got enough on this side of strength. And uh, this side, I just believe it needs a little bit more just to ensure we don't get, uh, have any future uh, problems. Uh, the last thing you want to do is have to break open the wing and, and uh, fix this and then have to resheet it. Uh, certainly not an option that we want to even look at doing. 
Uh, maybe we'll save that in the future for after a crash to show how to make some repairs. But for now, we'll just go ahead and finish up with uh, epoxying these in place. Uh, like I said, I've marked, cut, and uh, placed these in, in properly, and I'm going to go ahead and epoxy those. Uh, that will be the next step.